हेलो एवरीवन टुडे वी आर हेयर टू डिस्कस जोग्राफी ऑफ इंडिया एंड वर्ल्ड बेसिक लेवल टेस्ट सीरीज सो इफ वी टॉक अबाउट द अटेम्प्टिंग क्वेश्चंस अबाउट द प्री फर्स्ट व्हाट यू हैव टू सी दैट ऑन विच बेसिस द क्वेश्चंस हैज बीन गिवन मींस द क्वेश्चंस आर फैक्चुअल सिंपली और द कॉन्सेप्चुअल बट एज वी आर सींग द ट्रेंड दैट नाउ the questions are of facts also and concepts also so the thing is that you have to do on both hands or simply we can say that we have to make the preparation on the basis of concepts along with the facts related to them so in that regard only this question paper has been made for you all for practice so that in coming pre you all can easily attempt the questions related to geography so let's move on to the first question with reference to indian peninsular plateau read the following statements carefully and select the correct answer using the quotes given below means about the peninsular india the peninsular plateau is a table land composed of the old crystalline igneous and metamorphic rock The Central Highlands is a part of the peninsular plateau that lies to the south of Narmada River. The Chhota Nagpur plateau drained by the Damodar River marks the eastward extension of the peninsular plateau. Now, the if we talk about the simply the peninsular plateau part that means the Deccan Trap, okay? So, the first option is right, but the second one the Central Highland actually central highland is located in the north of Nar narmada river not in the south and the quest you can say sentence number 3 chhota nagpur plateau and the damodar river yes damodar river originates from palamu district jharkhand which is a part of chhota nagpur plateau region and damodar river is also known as biological desert and earlier it was known as soro of bengal but after the construction of dvc it turned into the boon for bengal now if you can see in the map that this part of india is considered as the central highland which consists of malwa plateau bundelkhand plateau and bagelkhand plateau and the narmada river is lying south of the central highland means south of the narmada river is the peninsular plateau and north of the narmada river is the central highlands then after if you talk about the damodar river as you can see the catchment area of the damodar river or we can say the basin area so damodar river is originating from the palamu district jharkhand and the main tributaries are barakar konar and on this damodar river only dvc has been constructed damodar valley corporation which is india's first mpr vp means multi purpose river valley project which is the photocopy or you can say xerox of tvc tennessee valley corporation on tennessee river in usa actually the question comes that what does the multi purpose river valley project means so simply on any river or its basin if we are going to construct the dams and the projects and the use of those projects are basically irrigation or hydroelectricity generation but apart from these two if the particular river valley is being utilized for more than two purposes like cafeteria recreational facilities boating fishery irrigational facilities then that particular river valley project will be considered as multi purpose river valley project and dvc is the first of india now damodar river is known as the biological desert why it is known as biological desert because as we know the damodar river is passing through the chhota nagpur plateau region and the reason is known for its mineral deposits so when the river passes through this area the mineral impurities and arsenic get dissolved in the river water which increases the bod of the river water which consists which is mainly 4 gram of water per 4 gram of oxygen per liter of water that's why the damodar river is known as biological desert due to the mineral and arsenic impurities in it 
Now moving on to the next, yeah, as you can see this is the peninsular plateau part. If we talk about the answer, then the answer is only 1 and 3 that it is correct. In context of pressure belts and wind directions, which of the following statements is or are correct? The development of air from a high pressure area to a low pressure area is called wind. Yes, air moves from high pressure towards the low pressure area. Seasonal winds change their direction with respect to different seasons. Yes, it is also right. Trade winds, westerlies and easterlies are example of seasonal winds. No, it's wrong. Actually, they are the example of planetary winds, prevailing winds or the permanent winds. Means, according to the question, given, uh, given correct options, means correct statements are 1 and 2. So, the answer will be D. Now, moving on to the pressure belts of earth. Or simply if we talk the general circulation of atmosphere. So, we know the general circulation of atmosphere consists of three sections that is the temperature belts which lead to the formation of pressure belts and pressure belts lead to the movement of wind. So, as you can see this general circulation of atmosphere is also known as tricellular model or meridional circulation. The image has been given over here in which you can see the north easterly trade, south easterly trades which are considered as the trade wind belt westerlies and polar easterlies along with the ITCZ and Hadley cell, mid latitude or feral cell or subpolar cell and the polar cell. Now the question comes how they are formed. So let's have a look. We know the temperature belts, the whole earth is divided into five temperature belts that is the torrid zone, temperate zone and the frigid zone and the division of this temperature belt is due to the angle of sun rays which are coming to our surface is different. In some places they are vertical in nature, in some places they are oblique in nature and in some places they are horizontal. So due to different angle of sun rays the whole earth is divided in three different temperature belts 30 to 30 torrid zone, 30 to 60 temperate and 60 to 90 frigid. So, if we talk about the rest that is the creation of pressure belts and wind belts, let us have a look. We know that the creation of pressure or you can say the pressure is created on surface due to two reasons that is the thermal pressure and the dynamic pressure. Thermal pressure is totally governed by temperature on the other hand dynamic which is also known as mechanical pressure is governed due to the movement of wind. So in thermal pressure the place where the temperature will be high the air near to the surface will get heated up due to conduction and then after the convection will form in that particular air and after becoming lighter the air will move up which will create low pressure over the surface and on the other place where the temperature is low the air will become heavy and it will sink down creating the high pressure over that surface and the air will move from high pressure towards the low pressure means in thermal pressure higher the temperature lower the pressure and lower the temperature higher the pressure but in dynamic what happens temperature does not matter about the creation of pressure but the direction of moon, wind suppose from two direction the wind is coming and over the surface they are colliding with each other so instead of going down they will move up and when they will move up they will create the low pressure over the surface and in upper troposphere when they will uh, collide they will sink down and they will create high pressure over the surface. 
temperature does not matter over this place. Now, this low pressure and high pressure has been created due to lifting, uh, you can say ascending and descending winds. If you are not clear with the dynamic or the mechanical pressure, wait for few minutes, you will understand that from which place these two winds over the surface are coming and in the upper atmosphere. Before that, remember two things. Ascending air will create low pressure over the surface. Descending will create high pressure over the surface. And wind will move from high pressure to low pressure. Now, let's have a look. If we talk about the equator, which is having the equatorial low pressure belt, or we simply we can say equator lies in torrid zone, so the low pressure will be created higher the temperature, lower the pressure, which will be the thermal and pole frigid zone. So high pressure means these three pressure belts are thermally induced pressure. Now the air over the equator due to heated, uh, heating up, it will lift up or you can say ascend in the troposphere and it will reach till tropopause. And after reaching till tropopause, it will diverge in two directions towards the both pole. But as they are going to move their source, they will lose the energy and instead of reaching pole, they will start sinking over 30, 35 degree. And we know the sinking air creates which pressure? High pressure. Temperature is high, but pressure is also high. Means the temperature is not governing the pressure, but rather the movement of wind is governing the pressure here. Now the wind which has been uh, just sinked over the surface will be diverted in two directions. One towards the equatorial part and the second towards the polar one. But when they will move, we know due to rotation of earth, one force is applied which is known as Coriolis force and according to Coriolis force any freely moving object and wind mind it will be deflected towards right of its path in northern hemisphere and towards left of its path in southern hemisphere means the wind which will move towards equator from 30-35 degree north latitude will be deflected towards right of their path and they will be deflected towards right towards the polar area. In this, towards left and towards left. Winds are known by their direction traditionally. So, they are known as northeast trade winds, southeast trade winds, and this one is known as trade wind belt as we saw in the earlier image. This will be known as westerlies. This side also westerlies means along with five pressure belts, we have got three wind belts or westerlies and trade winds. Now, over the pole, due to high pressure, the wind is sitting or the air is sitting freely and the earth is rotating continuously. So, one force is exerted over the pole or you can say applied that is known as force of inertia or centrifugal force, which say that any freely moving object, sorry, any freely sitting object over a rotating disc will be thrown out. Now the air which is sitting over the pole due to high pressure, it will be thrown out. But due to application of Coriolis force and we know Coriolis force is minimum over equator and maximum over pole, they will be deflected complete 90 degree towards right in north and complete 90 degree towards left in south and their direction will become from east so they are known as polar easterlies same here polar easterlies now when the polar easterlies and westerlies will meet 
between 55 to 60 degree latitude, they will move up or you can say they will ascend and when they will ascend, simply they are going to create low pressure over 55-60 degree which is also known as the polar front area and we know what is front the meeting point of two different air masses the imaginary boundary which is formed now after going to tropopause one will be diverted towards the equator and it will just meet in upper air with the Hadley cell path and it will descend it will reach to pole it will sink and just move like polar easterlies, westerlies, trade winds, trade winds, westerlies and polar easterlies. In this way, the three circles or you can say the three cycles complete. The first two cycles were given by Sir George Hadley. So it is known as Hadley cell. Subpolar cell and polar cell. Same here. And in this way, there are seven alternate pressure belts on earth, out of which three are thermal and four are dynamic. And they are equatorial low pressure belt, polar high pressure belts, thermal, subtropical high pressure belt, dynamic, subpolar low pressure belt, dynamic. Winds, trade winds, westerlies and polar easterlies which are permanent or planetary winds. Secondly, the westerlies in southern hemisphere due to absence of any land mass and less friction, their speed increases and that's why the westerlies in southern hemisphere are known by different names like roaring 40s, furious 50s and screaming 60s. On the other hand, the area between 5 degree north to 5 degree south is known as doldrum. As we know, the place near over equator having low pressure, high temperature and calm weather which means no wind belt. But the area of convergence of northeast and southeast trade winds is known as ITCZ which never remains in a straight line but rather fluctuates with the migration of sun from northern to southern hemisphere that's why ITCZ is also known as thermal equator or equatorial trough which means the thermal equator means the place nearby equator which have high temperature trough means the place nearby equator which have lowest pressure than equator that's why it is known as thermal equator or equatorial trough and this shifting of ITCZ according to the shifting of sun is one of the responsible factor for the onset of monsoon in India as we all know. So this is the tricellular model or the meridional circulation of atmosphere. Now if we talk about the third question, read the following statements about the mangrove forest in India carefully. Mangrove means the swamp vegetation. They consist of distinct wildlife communities occurring in the intertidal zone along the coast of tropical and subtropical region. Yes, this sentence is obviously right. Distinct means mangroves have got, simply we can say that many in endemic species and the rare species. So this is right. Sundarban Delta is the only mangrove forest in the world. No, this sentence is wrong. Why? Because the eastern coast of India have got mangroves, then after the western coast also and in world also. West Bengal has the highest percentage of area under the total mangrove cover followed by Gujarat and Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Yes, this is also right. In West Bengal in the form of Sundarban Delta. What will be the answer? Statement is correct. So, Statement will be 1 and 3 means B will be the answer. Now as you can see this is the Sundarban Delta and the species of Sundarban. You can see bear, tiger, crocodile, deer, otter, dolphin which are the 
freshwater dolphin or you can say the gangetic dolphin, python, jackal and porcupine which are found in the Sundarban Delta or you can see the mangroves and as you can see Bay of Bengal and land part so it is located in the in intertidal zone. These are the Sundari trees or you can say the mangrove forest as you can see and the roots are also known as respiratory roots because from their leaves as well as their roots they used to respirate because they are over the surface. Then after if we see the location of mangroves in India as you can see Sundarban, Mahanadi, Krishna Godavari, Kaveri, Goa, Ratnagiri and the Gujarat means Sundarban are the not only mangroves present in world. Consider the following statements about the Great Rift Valley. It is a long and deep valley formed due to the volcanic eruption. No, this sentence is absolutely wrong. Why? Because it is formed due to the faulting. It is bounded by wall-like steep slopes on both sides. Yes, which are known as the block mountains. It runs from south of Lake Malawi in Africa and then turns north towards the Black Sea. No, it's not Black Sea, it's Red Sea. And what is the question? Incorrect statement. 1 and 3 are incorrect means C will be the answer. Now if you see the African Rift Valley, as you can see, the African Rift Valley or the Rift Valley is located either on the transform or the diverging plate boundary. And here the parts of Africa is just moving away from each other. So this is the Afri Great African Rift Valley and starting from Lake Malawi and ending over Red Sea. And how they are formed? If we talk about the simple diagram, due to faulting the single block will be divided into three and due to movement the B block will subside down and C and A will remain up. This will be B, A and C. B is known as Rift Valley and A and C is known as Block Mountain or Horst. Clear? Now moving on to the next question. Which of the following statements regarding the various minerals found in, found in India is or are correct? Magnetite is the finest iron ore found in Karnataka. Yes, it's right. Magnes is the mainly used in the manufacturing of steel and ferromagnese alloy. Yes, it's right. Odisha is the largest producer of bauxite in India. Yes, it's also right. Copper is a ferrous mineral found in the Khetri mines of Rajasthan. Yes, copper is found in the Khetri mines of Rajasthan. But it's a non-ferrous mineral, not the ferrous one. Means 1, 2 and 3 are correct as we can see B. And if we see <coughs> the iron ore mines if uh, or you can say iron deposits, you can see Jharkhand and Odisha sector, Chhattisgarh and Maharashtra, Karnataka, Belari, Hospet, then after Kudermukh sector, Goa and Reddy sector. So these are the iron ore areas, Copper, Khetri, Udaipur, Amarkantak, Hajaribagh and Simbhum district of Jharkhand. Mainly Jharkhand and Rajasthan, Jharkhand and Rajasthan are having the maximum copper deposits and one is present in Madhya Pradesh. Consider the following tributaries of river Ganga, Gandak, Son, Yamuna and Betwa. Which of the tributaries of river Ganga given above are originated from the Himalayan regions? Simply Gandak and Yamuna are the only answer as because Son is originating from peninsular India. It is the tributary of Ganga but Betwa is not the tributary of Ganga but rather it is the tributary of Yamuna and here we are talking about the tributary of Ganga. 
if you see the ganga river system as you can see the ganga originates from we know gangotri glaciers and ends in bay of bengal but if we see the ganga river system more precisely let's have a look if we talk about the ganga ganga becomes ganga after the meeting of two rivers that is the alaknanda and bhagirathi over deoprayag after which a single stream moves to the plains of india or you can say towards the east by the name ganga and from farakka in west bengal it bifurcates in two parts one as bhagirathi hugli hugli river is the single distributary of ganga which remains in india and locally in west bengal hugli is known as bhagirathi and rest of the ganga enters in bangladesh as padma which further joins jamuna which is the name of brahmaputra in bangladesh makes meghna which makes the world's largest mangrove delta that is sundarban between bhagirathi and alaknanda bhagirathi is the largest ones that's why the source of ganga is considered as gangotri glacier or gomuk in alaknanda five streams used to meet in the upper part which forms the prayags in india like vishnu prayag alaknanda and dholi ganga then after nand prayag alaknanda and nandakini karna prayag alaknanda and pindar ganga then after rudra prayag alaknanda and mandakini and alaknanda and bhagirathi dev prayag these are the five prayags which are known as panch prayag and the most important thing in many times the arrangement of prayags from north to south it ha they have been asked vishnu prayag nand prayag karna prayag rudra prayag and dev prayag further the tributaries if we talk about the left hand tributaries ramganga sarda which is also known as kali ramganga sarda or kali in kali in nepal sarda in india saryu gomti gandak ghaghara budi gandak kosi and mahananda yamuna originates from himalayas uttarakhand again son rihant ajay punpun phalgu damodar rupranayan and silai these are the right hand tributaries of ganga and those are the left hand tributaries then after if we move on to the tributaries of yamuna then chambal sindh betwa and kin that's why i told you betwa is the tributary of ganga sorry yamuna not ganga then after rishi ganga hanuman ganga tan hindan tributaries of chambal which is the longest tributary of ganga mej banas parvati kali sind and sipra so if we make the ganga river system on one page this is the small ganga river system which we can remember or you can remember very easily by just putting them on a single paper so you can easily uh, we can say remember all these name one by one what you have to do move on to page number 14 and 16 mainly the up uttarakhand and bihar section of the ganga river basin and you will get this one part of the whole ganga basin take the highlighter mark each and every river and just trace them over the a4 set i know uh, you will get trouble and the most important thing it will take time but yes no pain no gain you, if you have to remember the rivers their arrangement from west to east east to west or which river lies in before which after which so you have to make this image or you can say the pictorial representation of ganga basin every river basin have got a pictorial representation if you are able to make that pictorial representation 
damn sure you are not going to forget that whole river system along with its tributaries throughout your life. So you have to practice it. Now moving on to the next. In context of Sundarban, consider the following statements. It derives its name from the Sundari trees that grows in the marshland. Yes, it's right. It is a mangrove area in the delta formed by the Ganges, Brahmaputra and Meghna. Yes, right now we, see, we saw this. It has been recognized as a wetland of international importance under the Ramsar Convention. Yes, Sundarban Delta is the second largest delta in the world. No, it's the largest one. As you can see, Sundarban Delta is sim uh, located in both Bangladesh and India. Maximum part in Bangladesh, small part in India. These are the Sundari trees. These are the Ramsar wetland sites of India. As you can see, answer will be 1, 2 and 3. Now moving on to the next, a pass is a navigable path through the mountain ranges. Yes, it's right, natural pathways. With reference to the Himalayan mountains and its passes, consider the following statements. Jojila, it connects the region of Ladakh and Kashmir. Pir Panjal, it is the mountain pass located in the Himachal Pradesh. No, it's located in Jammu Kashmir. This one is right. Sepkila, the river Satlas enters in India near this pass. Yes, it's right in Himachal Pradesh. Banihal, mountain pass is located across the Purvanchal range. No, it is also located in Jammu Kashmir. Means only 1 and 3 are correctly matched. As you can see, Pir Panjal, J and K, Jojila, again J and K, Banihal, J and K. Then after Parpik, Mitanga, Khunjerab, Karakoram, Sasar, Khardungla, Baralachala, Rohtang, Sipkila, Mana, Lipulek, Nathula, Jelepla, Bumla, Bumdila. The Purvanchal Hills passes are mainly the northeast one, that is the Sela, Bumdila, then after Kumjavang and Dipu. Now moving on to the next. The answer will be 1 and 3 as we saw. Consider the following planets. Cirrus, Eris, Homia and Pluto. Which of the following planets given above, above are the examples of dwarf planets? Answer is all the four are the dwarf planets, actually there are five dwarf planets that is Eris, Pluto, Homia, Mekmek and Cirrus. And out of these four, five, four are Plutoids except Cirrus, rest are Plutoids. If we see their size chronology, biggest dwarf planet is Eris and the smallest is Cirrus. They are arranged according to the size. Now moving on to the next question. The Great Barrier Reef is listed among the seven wonders of the natural world. In this context, which of the following statements is or are correct? Reef, the coral reefs. Actually, they are formed by the coral polyps, which are the micro sea organisms and lives with the symbiotic relationship with the algae, juzenthali. This reef is located on the northeast coast of the Queensland, Australia. Yes, it's right. It is the world's biggest single structure made by living organism. Yes, it's the biggest one and it is visible from space also. The corals and algae have an abiotic relationship. No, they have symbiotic or mutualistic relationship. So, the answer correct is 1 and 2 means B. Now, moving on to the next question. And before that, if you can see, this is the Great Barrier Reef of Australia on the northeastern part. Read the following statements carefully regarding the various heat zones of the earth. We discussed right now before uh, in general circulation of atmosphere. 
Torrid zone, the area between the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn receive maximum heat. Yes, it's right. The mid sun neighbor signs overhead on any latitude beyond the Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn. Yes, why it is so? Because the earth is tilted on its axis over 23 and a half degrees. So the maximum migration of sun is to Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. That's why the persons located between Cancer and Capricorn are going to receive minimum one day vertical light or you can say vertical or overhead sun once a year minimum and beyond that no one is going to receive the vertical sun rays. The area lying between the Arctic Circle and the North Pole is called the frigid zone. Yes, right now we have seen this. The area lying between Tropic of Cancer and Arctic Circle is called the temperate zone. Yes, this is also right. Means simply the temperature belts which we discussed. As you can see, torrid zone, temperate zone and frigid zone. So the answer will be all the sentences are correct. As you can see, only between tropics, the angle will be 90 degree and then the angle will decrease. In context, in the context of the tropical evergreen forest, consider the following statements. Tropical evergreen forest, which are also known as the tropical rainforest. This type of forest set their leaves in dry season to conserve water? No, because as they are known as evergreen and they are rainforest, so they does not set their leaves in dry season because there is no such dry season. In India, these forests are spread over the areas of western guards and island groups of Lakshadweep and Andaman. Yes, it's right because it is the maximum rain receiving area. The species such as one horned rhinosaurus are found in this forest. Yes, it's also right because it is also spread in northeastern India also. So the answer is 2 and 3 means D. As you can see, now the question comes why they are known as evergreen forest. The trees are not going to set their leaves. Yes, they set their leaves but not together. Like the forest which we have seen are deciduous in nature means there is a dry season and to cope up the dry season they used to set their leaves because leaves are the source of losing the water. But as because they are having more than 200 centimeter rain per year so they are having an ample of water so there is no need of setting the leaves at once. So when we are going to see the whole forest from the bird's eye or from the top view, the forest will remain green throughout the year. That's why they are also known as lungs of earth. If we see the distribution of forest, tidal forest, we know they will be located on the coast, simply means the mangrove forest are known as tidal forest, evergreen forest, the western ghats, some parts of eastern ghats, but mainly the northeast India. Tropical deciduous, the maximum part of India have tropical deciduous forest, then after the thorn forest, the semi-arid regions have thorn forest, and the Himalayan regions are having the Himalayan forest, or you can see the mountainous forest. So this is the natural vegetation distribution of India. Which of the following statement is or are not correct? An ice cap is a dome shaped mass of glacier ice, glacier ice that covers the surrounding train. No, it's wrong because it's the ice seat. Ice sheet is a dome shaped mass of glacier ice that spread out all direction but it is smaller than an ice cap. Okay. Ice sheet are found only in this is also wrong. Ice sheet are also found in Greenland and the Ant Antarctic regions of world. Yes, it's right. Means simply we can say the frigid zone means only sentence number three is right 
as because the definition is vice versa. The ice cap will be on second number and ice sheet will be on uh, first number because ice sheet is more widespread than the ice cap. So 1 and 2 are wrong. This is the ice cap as you can see covering the whole terrain and the most important thing is that just like a cap but this is the ice sheet just like a field. With reference to the celestial bodies, read the following statements carefully. Celestial bodies are made up of gaseous and they consume energy from the sun. They consume energy from the sun but it's not necessary. They are gaseous. They can be terrestrial also or rocky surfaces also like earth, moon, Mars, Venus. So this sentence is wrong. The North Star, also known as the Pole Star, always remains in the same position in the sky. Yes, it's right. And that's why in ancient times, people used to determine directions during the night with the help of the stars. Means 2 and 3 are correct. Consider the following statements. The temperature of the atmosphere changes not only between day and night, but also from season to season. Yes, it's right. Insulation, the incoming solar energy intercepted by the earth affects the temperature of the atmosphere. Yes, and this is also right. As because we know the heat budget of earth, the energy which is coming from the sun, it is abs first absorbed by the atmosphere, then finally received by the earth's surface in the form of short waves. And then after in night, it is released in the form of long wave terrestrial radiations which used to keep the atmosphere warm means the main source of heat for the earth's atmosphere is the insulation means solar radiation so option one is the correct explain uh, of both one and two are correct and two is the correct explanation of statement one tropical deciduous forests are the most widespread forest of india as we saw right now these forests are found in which of the following states? Jharkhand, Odisha, Chhattisgarh. Yes, it's right. Because in Gujarat, as we saw, that no such deciduous, but you can say the thorn forest means the semi arid vegetation is present. So only 1, 2, and 3 is correct. You can see thorn forest is present in Gujarat and rest deciduous. In the context of different names of Brahmaputra river in different regions match the following pairs. Arunachal Pradesh, Dihang, Tibbat, Sangpo, Bangladesh, Zamuna. Choose the correct answer by using the course given below. Actually, the matchings has been done correct. A, B, Arunachal Pradesh, Dihang, yes, to Tibbat, Sangpo, no, this is not, option number C is correct, 1, A, 2, B and Bangladesh, C. Because Brahmaputra have got many names like Sangpo in Tibbat, Yarlung, Zangbo, Ziyang, Zing in China, Dihang in Arunachal Pradesh, Brahmaputra in Assam Valley, Jamuna in Bangladesh and this is the whole Brahmaputra which is just coming from here you can see Yarlung Jangbo which is also known as Sangpo as because earlier Tibbat was a single identity now China has acquired it will move and enter in India from Namcha Barua peak and it will just merge with Padma and become the Meghna river so this is the whole Brahmaputra which starts from Ching Ma Yung Dung Glacier now which is known as Angsi Glacier. This is the course of Brahmaputra as you can see in India from simply you can say from Namcha Barwa it is entering and through Arunachal and Assam it is moving to the Bangladesh part right hand tributaries and the left hand tributaries of Brahmaputra and Brahmaputra is the largest river of India 
means influx of water and the most important thing it is the maximum sediment carrying river that's why it makes many riverine islands in its course and we all know majuli in assam is the world's largest riverine island and has been also declared as the 33rd district of assam and the world's first riverine island district moving on to the next question which of the following statements is or are correct about the various bodies that move around the sun a satellite is a celestial body that moves around the planets in the same way as the planets move around the sun yes satellites move revolve around the planets and cut their orbits INSAT, IRS and EDUSAT are some of the examples of Indian satellites currently placed in space. Yes, this is also right. Asteroids are the tiny bodies found between the orbits of Saturn and Jupiter. No, it's wrong because they are found between Mars and Jupiter. So only 1 and 2 are correct. Given below are two statements labeled as assertion and reason read these statements meteorites are small pieces of rocks that can cause flash of light yes when they will enter into the earth's atmosphere they will consider as meteors and they will burn due to the process of friction with the air the meteorites get heated up and burn this is also right and both a and r are true and the most important thing is that R is the ex correct explanation of A. Consider the following statements regarding the equator of the earth. Equator is an imaginary line, imaginary circular line that divides the planet earth into two equal parts. Yes, it's right. All parallel circles of the equator up to the poles are called at parallels of lot longitudes. No, they are parallels of latitudes not correct are not correct so only two is not correct one is correct as you can see these are considered as latitudes and equator is the latitude which is dividing the earth in two equal parts northern and southern hemisphere we know the difference between two latitudes is 111 kilometer and as we move from equator towards pole the area synchronizes of the earth that's why the latitudes also synchronize or you can say shrinks or it's becoming smaller and the most important thing is that latitudes are complete circle on the other hand if you talk about the meridians or the longitudes they are semicircle in nature and they are of the same length as because they run from pole to pole and they have got an origin and the end point so they are not parallel in nature means the maximum distance between the longitudes is over equator and minimum over the poles identify the incorrect statement from below more than 81 percent of the earth is covered with water and only about 19 percent is with land no it's wrong as because 71 is water and 29 percent is land more than 97 percent of earth's water is found in the oceans and is too salty to human use right atlantic ocean is accept and is the second largest ocean in the world yes Arctic Ocean is connected with the Pacific Ocean by a narrow stretch known as Bering Strait. Yes, it's right. So, only A is incorrect statement. As you can see, Atlantic Ocean is having S shape. Simply Bering Sea or Bering Strait, Arctic Ocean and Pacific Ocean second largest ocean in world 
रीड द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट रिगार्डिंग द क्लाइमेट ऑफ ऑस्ट्रेलिया ऑस्ट्रेलियन कॉन्टिनेंट केयरफुली क्विंसलैंड एक्सपीरियंस इज वार्म समर एंड माइल्ड विंटर टेम्परेचर कैन बी वेरी लो इन द नॉर्थ वेस्ट रीजन ऑफ साउथ वेल्स नो इट्स रॉन्ग टेम्परेचर कैन बी वेरी कोल्ड इन द सदर्न एल्पाइन रीजन ऑफ द साउथ वेल्स इट्स राइट एंड दिस वन इज ऑल्सो राइट सो करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट इज ओनली वन एंड थ्री दैट इज बी एज यू कैन सी क्विंसलैंड एरिया साउथ वन इज माइल्डर एंड नॉर्थ वन इज हॉटर Which of the following statements is or are correct about the Mediterranean region means the Mediterranean Sea part Mediterranean trees adapt themselves to dry summers with the help of their thick barks and wax coated leaves yes because Mediterranean regions has dry summer and wet winters these regions experiences mild rainy summers and cold winters no Mediterranean Mediterranean regions are popularly known as the orchards of the world. Yes, it's also right. Correct. One and three. So the answer will be D. As you can see, this is the Mediterranean region, which is known as the orchards of the world. Consider the following statements the different season experience during the year changed due to the change in position of the earth around the sun this sentence is wrong now you might be wondering why because only revolution around the sun of earth is not the responsible factor for the change in season but rather revolution of earth around the sun on its tilted axis so by the time earth will be not tilted seasons will not change the circle that divides the day from night on the globe is called the circle of illumination yes it's right circle of illumination coincides with the axis of earth no it's wrong it does not coincides so only two is correct as you can see this is the circle of illumination which is not coinciding with the axis and the most important thing is that you can see earth is revolving around the sun on its tilted axis that's why the season are changing with reference to the different methods used for the conservation of soil consider the following statements mulching is process in which the bare grounds between the plants is covered with the layer of organic matter yes just like bunch of straw terrace farming different crops are grown alternate rows and are sown in different times no it is the staircase farming it is also known as staircase farming and simply it is done in the hilly regions to conserve the soil erosion intercropping is a method of plugging across the hill slope no actually both are interchanged so only let me with reference to different only one is right so the answer will be d this is that is terrace farming or terrace farming consider the following statements north america is linked to south america by a very narrow strip of land called isthmus of panama yes it's right North America is surrounded by Pacific Ocean on the east and Atlantic on the west no opposite east atlantic west pacific not correct only two and if we talk about isthmus isthmus is considered as a narrow strip of land which connects two bigger land mass and separates two bigger water bodies so isthmus of panama separates atlantic ocean and pacific ocean and connects south america and north america isthmus of suez uh, simply we can say uh, divides red sea and mediterranean sea and connects asia and africa so you can see here this is the panama isthmus moving on to the next in in the context of hydrosphere consider the following statements 
it's a narrow zone where land water and air exist actually the area where land air and water exist is considered as the biome or uh, biome so it's not the hydrosphere pacific ocean is the second largest ocean with a highly indented coastline wrong it's the largest ocean irregular and indented coastlines provide ideal location for the natural harbors and ports yes means the coastlines which have got uh, simply we can say mountain barriers running parallel to the coast so only three is correct now moving on to the next question in the context of various mountain ranges found in south america consider the following statements mount aconcagua is the highest peak found in south america yes it's right aconcagua is a volcanic origin mountain and is an example of active volcano no it's an example of torment and this is the longest mountain range in world yes it's right it is approximately 7200 km long and runs across along the western coast of south american continent from north to south so only one and three are correct as you can see this is andes and this is mount aconcagua now moving on to the next question consider the following statements density of the atmosphere is minimum at the sea level and increases rapidly as we go upward no it is opposite maximum at sea level and decreases as we go opposite temperature of the atmosphere decreases as we go upward yes as because the density decreases air from the higher region in the atmosphere sinks downward to create a low pressure area no it's also wrong so only two is the correct statement now moving on to the next question a meridian is a line of longitude that connects geographical poles of the earth in this context consider the following statements all meridians are of equal length yes it's right we saw right now in the earlier question the meridian which passes through greenwich is called the prime meridian yes it's zero degree from the royal observatory or you can say british observatory prime meridian and 90 degree meridian divides the earth into two into the eastern hemisphere and the western hemisphere no it's wrong it's not 90 it's 180 degree meridian means only one and two are correct d as you can see prime meridian zero degree and just opposite will be the 180 degree which will divide the earth into equal half in the context of river found in africa consider the following pairs congo river lake victoria no actually congo river originates from katanga plateau niger river guena highlands yes it's right nile river originates from lake victoria which of the pairs given above are not correctly matched so we can say one and three option number a is the answer congo will be katanga plateau and nile river will be the lake victoria and from lake tana blue nile originates from lake victoria white nile originates which further moves and meets over khartoum capital of sudan and becomes one single stream that is nile which falls in mediterranean sea as you can see from lake victoria white nile is originating lake tana blue nile over khartoum they are meeting and just moving towards the north and draining in mediterranean sea niger river guena highlands it is originating and Congo River, Katanga Plateau. Read the following statements regarding the major landforms of the earth carefully. A plateau is an elevated flat land which is rich in mineral deposits. Yes, this sentence is right. The Alps and the Vosges mountains located in Europe are among the examples of block mountains. No, 
only roses is block alps is fold mountain and in fold alps is the young fold mountain jog fall located in karnataka is the highest waterfall in india no it's the third highest waterfall in india highest waterfall is located in meghalaya and the second highest waterfall is dud sagar fall located in goa the answer will be only one next with reference to the american continent consider the following statement nigeria is the largest coal producing country in the western africa yes it's right e genesis native to western africa is the principal species species for obtaining palm oil yes it is also right both one and two are correct which of the following statement is or are not correct about the physical geography of india gangetic plain is the largest unit of great plains of india stretching from delhi to kolkata yes it's right which is also known as indus ganga brahmaputra plain area mazuli in brahmaputra river is the largest inhabited riverine island in world yes as i told you right now in brahmaputra bhavar belt is a narrow belt lying parallel to the slopes of the shivaliks yes this is the belt where river disappears after reaching to the foothills of or you can say the plain area and again reemerges in the tarai belt tarai is a wet swampy and marshy region just over the after the bhavar bhavar is a small stretch of 8 uh, 8 to 12 kilometers tarai is up to 16 kilometer stretch in tarai river reemerges over the surface and in bhavar river disappears means not correct none of the above sentences are not correct all are correct as you can see the whole indus ganga brahmaputra plain area with reference to the formation of the rocks which of the following statements is or are correct when the molten magma becomes solid it forms rocks that are known as igneous rock yes it's right if they will be formed inside the crust intrusive over the crust extrusive basalt is an example of intrusive igneous rock has a very fine grained structure no it's wrong basalt is an extrusive one when the molten magma cools down deep inside the earth it leads to the formation of extrusive igneous rock wrong i told you right now it will be intrusive so only one is correct that is option number 1 36 water vapor hydrofluorocarbons methane and nitrous oxide which of the gases given above is or are example of greenhouse gases all the all the four are the example of greenhouse gases now the question comes what are greenhouse gases actually greenhouse gases you might be thinking their color is green but we have studied already that gases are colorless and odorless so why they are known as green actually there is a concept which is known as greenhouse effect which is a concept of colder places where we used to construct the glass house and glass permits the short waves or you can say insulation or energy short wave radiation to enter into the system and when it start you uh, you can say try to come out of the system glass used to acts as a insulator and it traps the energy leading into increment of temperature into the system in comparison to outside just like a car during summer season standing outside and locked from all side like this only the gases acts as an tra uh, trapping agent of the solar radiations means the out uh, incoming also and outgoing also which used to trap the energy within the earth's atmosphere which heat up the atmosphere and creates a greenhouse effect so due to their property of trapping the energy they and uh, you can say making possible the earth as a habitable planet they are considered as greenhouse gases means the gases which are responsible for greenery on earth and they are mainly co2 ch4 water vapor ozone 
हाइड्रोफ्लोरोकार्बन्स नाइट्रस ऑक्साइड सी एफ सी ऑल दीज मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट इन द कंटेक्सट ऑफ द टर्म टाइड कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट एंड वी नो टाइड्स वॉट आर टाइड्स द प्रियोडिकल राइज एंड फॉल ऑफ सी वॉटर ट्वाइस अ डे ड्यू टू द ग्रेविटेशनल पुल ऑफ मून एंड सन इज कंसिडर्ड एज टाइट द रिदमिक राइज ऑफ एंड फॉल ऑफ ओसियन वाटर वॉन्स अ डे नो इट इज ट्वाइस अ डे a strong gravitational pull exerted by the sun and the moon on the earth surface is responsible for causing the tides yes it's right as i told you right now when the sun the moon and the earth are in the same line the tides are at the highest yes and they are known as spring tides the rise and fall of water due to tides can be used to generate electricity yes tidal energy means 2 3 and 4 are correct as you can see when sun moon will and earth will be in a straight line the maximum tide will occur which will be known as spring tide but if they will be present on right angle it will be considered as nip tide consider the following statements the forces which acts on the surface of the earth are called exogenic forces yes actually these are the geomorphic processes or uh, which occurs inside the earth also and over the earth inside the earth endo over the earth exo endogenic forces produce sudden movement between the tectonic plates yes an earthquake is measured with the machine called seismograph yes means 1 2 and 3 all are correct as you can see geomorphic processes are divided in two parts endogenic exogenic endogenic are again divided into two parts diastrophism means slow sudden means sudden earthquake and volcano aerogenic and orogenic aerogenic means steering and shearing forces upward and downward movement orogenic tension and compression folding and faultings exogenic have two parts weathering and erosion weathering are of three types physical chemical and mechanical physical is due to the freeze uh, temperature change freeze and thaw all these chemical due to the chemical reactions and biological when the weathering or the decay and disintegration of rock are done due to the biological involvement erosion essence of erosion ice which means glacier river water sea wind underground water and you will find the underground water work or erosion mainly in the limestone topography which is also known as karst topography next question read the following statements carefully erosion is the wearing away of the landscape by different agents like water wind and ice right now we saw it when a river enters the plain it twists and turns from large to form large bends known as meanders yes it's also right and in meandering coriolis force is also applied the meander loop cut off from the river and forms the oxbow lake yes when the shape of the following water decreases the river begins to break up into number of streams called tributaries no those are distributaries 1 2 and 3 are correct before that you can see the river meanders and the loops which has been cut i have been formed as oxbow lakes answer will be 1 2 and 3 only which of the following statements is or are correct about the landforms formed by the process of erosion and deposition sea caves are formed primarily from erosion caused by sea waves yes 
Sea arc is a wall like landform which is formed due to the erosion of stack. No, it's wrong. Stacks are wall like forms which are formed due to the erosion of sea arc. So the definition is opposite. Rock pedestals is a type of mushroom shaped landforms that is formed by the action of wind erosion and these rock pedestals are also known as mushroom rocks. So third is also right, correct, 1 and 3, so the answer will be C. As you can see, sea waves are formed due to erosion, sea arc, sea stack. Now, if sea stack will be eroded, then sea arc will be eroded, then a stack will be formed. Not by the erosion of stack, the arc will be formed. So the definition was opposite. India is ranked third in the world in the terms of building large dams. In this context, consider the following pairs. Sardar Sarovar Dam, it is built over the Narmada River on, in Gujarat. Right match. Tihri Dam, the longest earthen dam in the world. No. Hirakud, tallest dam built in India. It is also wrong. Actually, Hirakud is the longest earthen dam, approximately 25 km long. And Tihri is the tallest dam of India and sixth tallest dam in the world. Right now, approximately 262 meter in height. So, not correctly matched. Only two pairs are not correctly matched. Under great heat and pressure, igneous and sedimentary rocks can change into metamorphic rocks. In this context, consider the following rocks. Means you have to find out the metamorphic clay. No, it's a sedimentary rock. Slate, yes. Limestone, no. It's also a sedimentary rock. Marble, yes, because marble is formed by uh, limestone and slate by clay. So only 2 and 3 is the correct answer. Option number B. In the context of gases that are present in the atmosphere, consider the following statements. Nitrogen, the most abundant gas in the air, yes, 78.084%. Plant need nitrogen for their survival and growth, yes. And they are one of the source of fixing the nitrogen directly to the soil. Green plant produce oxygen during photosynthesis, yes. All the three are correct. Consider the following statements regarding the carbon emissions. Before that, if we talk about the percentage of gases present in our atmosphere, nitrogen 78.084, oxygen 20.947, then after argon 0.934, carbon dioxide 0 0.036, then after methane, uh, sorry, neon 0 0.0018, then after helium, 0 0. 0.4005 uh, methane 0 0.002 then after neon 0 0.0011 hydrogen 4 times 0 0.05 then after xenon 5 times 0 0.87 so this is the chronology nitrogen oxygen argon carbon krypton then after Helium, methane, neon, sorry, neon will be below carbon dioxide. Then after below methane will be the krypton, then after hydrogen and xenon. The burning of fossils, for fuels, add on, adds billions of tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Yes, increase in the volume of carbon dioxide affects the both weather and climate. Yes, it's right. Both 1 and 2 are correct. With reference to the layers of the atmosphere, consider the following pairs. Troposphere. In this layer, the temperature decreases with increase in height. Yes, because the density decreases. The ozone layer is found in this layer stratosphere. Yes, between 30 to 50 kilometers, which protect us from ultraviolet rays. 
if you talk about ultraviolet rays there are a b and c a is the least you can say affecting and it reaches to the surface uv index which we see b and c are absorbed by the ozone layer and the c is the most dangerous one and b also which causes skin cancer to us ionosphere radio waves that are transmitted from the earth are reflected by this layer yes it's also right ionosphere so all the three are correctly matched and if you talk about the layers of atmosphere then the layers of atmosphere are mainly troposphere stratosphere in which ozone layer lies mesosphere ionosphere thermosphere and exosphere we all know no weather phenomena take place in stratosphere or all the weather phenomena take place in troposphere only meteors burns in mesosphere radio communication in ionosphere but actually the ionosphere coincides in thermosphere only the lower part of thermosphere is known as the ionosphere as you can see in diagram troposphere all the weather phenomena and conditions mesosphere ozone is present uh, stratosphere mesosphere the burning of meteors is taking place because the density is increasing thermosphere in the lower layer phenomena of aurora take place because of the ionized particles and exosphere is the outermost layer of the earth surface now moving on to the next question nuclear energy plays a critical role in the sustainable development of a nation in this regard read the following statements carefully nuclear power is obtained from the energy stored in the nuclei of atoms of naturally occurring radioactive elements yes it's right then after thorium found in jharkhand and the arauli ranges of rajasthan is used for generating nuclear power yes thorium is also found in sand uranium is found in large quantities in monazite sands of karnataka no it's wrong it's found in kerala so only is or are not correct so only 3 is not correct means a consider the following statements carefully regarding the himalayan mountain ranges in india means the himalayas the himalayan mountain ranges run in west to east direction from the indus river to the brahmaputra river it's right and it is one of the longest mountain range in world having 2400 km of length and highest mountain range in world the northernmost range is known as the greater himalayas yes either you can say greater himalayas himadri inner himalayas or tibetan himalayas the outermost range of the himalayas is called the purvanchal range no it's wrong actually it is called the shivalik range only 1 and 2 are correct means b you can see as himalayas this is the inner one middle one and the outer one this part is known as the purvanchal hills or the no eastern himalayas with reference to the term air pressure which of the following statements is or are correct it is defined as the pressure exerted by the weight of air on the earth surface yes it's right as high pressure and low pressure air pressure is lowest at sea level and increases with height no it's wrong is highest at sea level and decreases with height horizontally the distribution of air pressure is influenced by the temperature of the air yes it's right only 1 and 3 means c is the correct answer read the following statements carefully mount kilimanjaro is located in tanzania africa yes it's right and it is the highest peak of african continent also Kilimanjaro the highest peak in Africa remains snow covered throughout the year yes it's right due to elevation altitude as we know that temperature of any place is governed by latitude altitude continentality then after distance from land and sea ocean currents prevailing winds so due to located on equator also Kilimanjaro have snow cover throughout the year 
so neither one nor two means are not correct both are correct in the context of cyclones consider the following statements formation of a very low pressure system with a very high speed winds lead to the net natural phenomena of cyclone yes it's right so cyclones are normally termed as low pressure systems surrounded by high pressure the western cyclonic disturbances experienced in the north and northwestern parts of india are brought by the westerly jet streams yes it's right and this is only known as the western disturbance which further turns into north east trade winds or retreating monsoon for south india a cyclone is known as hurricane in japan no it's wrong they are known as typhoon and when they will come in usa or caribbean sea then they will be known as hurricanes in australia willy willies and in indian ocean bay of bengal and arabian sea simply cyclone so the answer will be 1 and 2 only as you can see this is the diagram of tropical cyclone where in the center the eye of the cyclone is there where low pressure system is present and the winds are rushing and then after the winds are lifted and forms the cumulonimbus clouds in the eye wall which is the which have got the most worst weather conditions maximum wind speed maximum rainfall torrential rainfall and in the you can say outer part of the cyclone normally the weather becomes bad so in exam also they used to ask you if a cyclone is facing towards you what will be the weather condition you will start experiencing so firstly the wind speed will be very less dusty winds then after drizzle will take place but when the eye wall will come cumulonimbus clouds torrential rainfall maximum wind speed then after eye of the cyclone means calm weather and clear sky will be there no such weather phenomena will phenomena will take place so this is the tropical cyclone part which of the following statement is or are correct when water vapor rises it starts cooling and this process of condensation leads to the formation of water droplets yes it's right mohsen ram located in assam is the wettest place on earth no it's wrong actually wettest place on earth since last two years is cherapunji and mohsen ram and cherapunji both are located in meghalaya so only one is correct consider the following sources of water ice cap ground water fresh water lakes and river arrange the given above sources of water in correct sequence of decreasing percentage of fresh water and choose the correct answer actually all are sequ uh, arranged sec in sequence only 1 2 3 and 4 as you can see the whole water of the earth is divided in two sections the saline water and the fresh water so maximum is saline water more or less you can say 97% rest three maximum is glacier then after the ground water and then after the after the surface water if we talk about the surface and the other fresh waters ground ice and permafrost region means the glaciers or the mountains lakes then after the soil then swamps then rivers then living things and the lowest is in the atmosphere now moving to the next some studies suggest that climate change is speeding up ocean currents in this regard read the following statements carefully about ocean currents they are streams of water flowing constantly on ocean surface in random direction no they have got a fixed direction and they are moving from million of years in one direction only actually if we talk about the ocean currents ocean currents are considered to be a part of ocean water or a stream of ocean water having a perfect width depth length and a definite speed moving in one direction is considered as ocean currents and the main work of ocean currents is to regulate the temperature on whole earth the warm currents originate near the equator and move towards pole yes it's right 
The Labradorosian current is an example of warm current. No, it's wrong. It's the cold current, which is also known as West Greenland current. So only two is right. As you can see, these ocean currents, the currents which are moving from equator towards the polar region, like the Gulf Stream, North Atlantic Drift, or the Brazilian current, Agula current, East Australian Curosio current, or the North Pacific current, Alaska current, all these are the warm one, and the colder one are the Greenland or Irvinger, Labrador current, Canary current, means the currents which are coming from the polar regions, north or south, will be cold, and moving from equator towards the higher latitudes will be considered as cold. Next. With reference to the rocks and minerals, which of the following statements is or are correct? Metamorphic rocks under great heat and pressure melt down to form the molten magma. Yes, they can. Hard rocks are used for making roads, houses and buildings. Yes, it's right. Minerals are naturally occurring substances that have certain physical properties and definite chemical composition. Yes, this is also right. So, 1, 2 and 3 all are correct. Consider the following statements about the Amazon Basin. It stretches directly on the equator and is characterized by hot and wet climate throughout the year. Yes, it's right. And that's why the rainforest of Amazon are also known as the lungs of earth. And Amazon is the largest river in the world as we all know. Bromelid, bromeliads, sorry, bromelidis are special plants found in this region that can store water in their leaves? Yes. Species like flesh-eating pirhana fish are found in the Amazon River. Yes, this is also right. Means all the threes, one, two and three are correct. Which of the following statements is or are not correct? And regarding what? El Nino, which is a Pacific Ocean circulation and Southern Pacific mainly and associated with warm ocean current. And El Nino is mainly a Spanish word which means male child or the Christ child because it take, it start, starts from last week of December and it's an abnormal case. El Nino is the periodic development of cold ocean current along the coast of Peru. No, it's a warm current. Presence of El Nino leads to decrease in sea surface temperature. No, it leads to increase in sea surface temperature. El Nino weakens of the trade winds in the region. Yes, it's right. So, 1 and 2 are not correct. If we talk about the El Nino, two cases are given here. One is the normal one and the second one is the El Nino year. In normal one, what we are seeing that the East Australian part is having the warm water and on the west one is the cold that is the Humboldt current and due to this, the thermocline in this region is inclined. We know what does thermocline means? The June bit in the sea which separates the warmer water from the colder water. But suddenly during El Nino year, the Humboldt currents weakers and when the Humboldt currents weakens, suddenly the water which was piled up over the East Australia spreads and the sea level becomes equal, the thermocline becomes equal and the low pressure is created over the West South America or you can say Peru coast, Peru coast and the circulation which was in this manner becomes opposite in this manner and this opposite circulation is only considered as El Nino and the oscillation of thermocline in Southern Ocean is considered as southern oscillation. That's why collectively this whole situation is known as Enso phenomena, El Nino southern oscillation. In the context of intertropical convergence zone, that is ITCZ, we discussed it earlier only. Which of the statements given below is not correct? It is a broad trough of low pressure in equatorial latitudes, as I told you earlier also that it is also known as thermal equator or equatorial trough. So this one is right. The northeast and southeast trade winds converge in this region, yes. 
the itcz lies above the equator throughout the year no it's wrong as i told you it fluctuates it is one of the contributing factor for the onset of monsoon in india it's right means option number c that is it is a straight line is wrong as because you can see in july the itcz moves towards the north and in january the itcz move towards south with the move, move, shifting of sun from northern hemisphere to southern hemisphere in the context of it uh, sorry grasslands are known with different names in different regions in this context consider the following statements east africa savanna venezuela llanos north america prairies south america wells how many pairs given above is or are correctly matched so all four pairs are correctly matched and if we talk about the grasslands of world north america the temperate grasslands prairies south america llanos tropical then after campos tropical brazil and pampas argentina those are temperate steppes which are uh, temperate in nature eurasia europe and asia then after manchurian then after savanna east africa and wells south africa downs those are in australia now moving on to the next consider the following statements about the indus river system the river indus rises in tibet near lake mansarovar yes it's right satluj bias ravi chambal and jhelum are the tributaries all are right but chambal is the tributary of ganga it will be chenab means wrong basin of river indus is located both in india and pakistan yes right river indus is the longest river in india no it's wrong because ganga is the longest river only one and three are correct that is b if we talk about indus river just like the river system of ganga if you draw the indus river system enters in india between ladakh and jaskar range and the tributaries jaskar siok nubra gilgit hunja kabul tochi khurram jhelum chenab ravi bias and satluj bias joins in harike pattan firozpur district of punjab and makes the harike reservoir from where indira gandhi canal originates then after near uch sharif satluj joins chenab and make the panchnad and finally the panchnad or the single river which is made after the joining of chenab jhelum ravi chenab and satluj meets near mithan coat in indus and this is the river basin of indus in which you can say uri and uh, uri dam and kisan ganga on jhelum salal baglihar and dulhasti on chenab then after thin dam which is also known as ranjit sagar on ravi pong dam maharana pratap sagar on bias bhakra nangal and the another dam is nathpa jhakri on satluj are located in indian part of the rivers and this is the small indus river system as we can see in india it enters in india near lahiri in ladakh lahiri dam chok is the exact place read the following statements carefully and select the correct answer using the quotes given below equinox is a phenomena in which the whole earth experiences equal day and equal nights 
Yes, that is the 21st March and 23rd September. Vernal or spring equinox and autumnal equinox. During summer solstice, the days are longer than the nights in northern hemisphere. Yes. On 22nd December, the Tropic of, Can the Tropic of Cancer receives direct rays. No, it's wrong. That is Tropic of Capricorn. So only 1 and 2 are correct. That is D. As you can see, Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. Summer solstice, June 21. Winter solstice, December 22. Now moving on to the next. Consider the following statements. Atal Tunnel is the longest highway tunnel in the world. Yes, it's right. Atal Tunnel has been built by the BRO. Yes. Atal Tunnel connects the region of Manali and Spiti Valley. Yes, it is approximately 9.2 km before the construction of Atal Tunnel. The road or you can say communica road communication used to stop for near about 5 to 6 months due to snowfall. So, all the three sentences are correct. In the context of different types of soil found in India, match the following pairs. Yellow, red and yellow soil, black soil, laterite soil and regular soil. Red and yellow soil, Chhattisgarh, black soil, Gujarat, laterite, Karnataka and regular Andhra Pradesh. So, the answer will be A, B, C and D. Now, you might be thinking that Black soil is also known as regur soil, but according to the option which has been given, the perfect answer, or you can say the you can say the maximum weightage answer is going to be A only. You can see alluvial black, red, laterite, arid soils. So all are given the locations like the alluvial soil, then after the location of black soil, Gujarat. Andhra, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh. Then after the laterite soil, the area having high rainfall, we'll have laterite soil, arid soil, desert area, and forest and mountainous soil will be the Himalayan regions. Consider the following terms: Juming, Milpa, Penda, Walre, Kuruva, and Dipa. Which of the given terms? are used synonymously for sifting cultivation in India. Actually, only five as because Milpa is the name of sifting cultivation in Mexico. So only one, two, one, three, four, five and six, C is the correct answer. In the context of various types of crops grown in India, consider the following statements. India is the second largest producer of rice in the world. Yes, it's right. Jowar is rain fed crop mostly grown in the moist areas. Yes. Maize is a rabi crop. No, maize is a kharif crop. Bajra grows well on sandy soil and sallow black soil. Yes, it's right. So, answer will be 1, 2 and 4. So, it will be B. Now, moving on to next question. To protect our flora and fauna and their habitat, several protected areas are earmarked by the government of India. In this context, consider the following statements. National park is an area where animals are protected for, from any disturbance to them and their habitat. It's wrong. Biosphere Reserve is a large area of protected land for conservation of wildlife, plant and animal and resources, traditional life of the tribals. Yes, it's right. Wildlife Sanctuary is an area reserved for wildlife where they can freely use the habitat and natural resources. No. Actually, the definition has been just opposite. National Park will be 3 and wildlife will be 2. So, the answer will be only 2, that is D. An international agreement between governments, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora was adopted in 1963. 
with reference to this which of the following statements is or are correct it aims to ensure that international trade in specimens of wild animals and plants does not threaten their survival yes the species such as bears dolphins cacti coral orchids and alloys are protected under this convention yes it's right means both one and two are correct read the following statements about the natural gas and its reserves carefully it is found with petroleum deposits and is released when crude oil is brought to the surface of the earth yes in india the major natural gas reserves are located in krishna godavari delta and in tripura yes it is used as a raw material in chemical petrochemicals and fertilizer industries yes answer will be 1 2 and 3 india is known for its herbs and spices from ancient times in this regard which of the following statements are correct sarpaganda found only in india and is a plant used to treat blood pressure yes it's right babu leaves are used as a cure for eye sores yes neem has high antibiotic and antibacterial properties yes it's right all the three one two and three are correct that is c next question earth's atmosphere has a series of layers each with its own specific traits in this context which of the following statements given below is or are correct meteorites that enter the earth's atmosphere burn up in mesosphere yes it's right right now we saw in the previous question the ionosphere is a part of thermosphere this also we saw the in troposphere only light gases like helium and hydrogen float no it's wrong troposphere consists of all the gases so only one and two is the correct answer that is a now moving on to the next question in the context of biogas consider the following statements it is essentially a mixture of methane and carbon dioxide yes it is produced by the decomposition of organic matter yes it has low thermal efficiency in comparison to kerosene no it's wrong it has high thermal efficiency only one and two are correct read the following statements about agriculture and food security in india food security exists when all people at all times have access to sufficient safe and nutritious food to meet their dietary needs yes intensive subsistence farming is a type of farming practiced in the area of high products population pressure on land yes the degree of commercialization of agriculture varies from one region to another yes this is also right so all the three one two and three are correct Consider the following statements. India is the largest producer of cotton that grow well in drier parts of the black soil. Correct. Jute known as the golden fiber grows on well drained fertile soil in the flood plains. Right. Both are correct. With reference to the geography of India. Which of the following statements given below is not correct? India shares its land boundary with Pakistan and Afghanistan in northeast. This is right. The westernmost point of India is two hours ahead of easternmost point. No, it is behind, back. The southernmost point of India is known as Indra point. And Sri Lanka has separated, is separated from India by a narrow channel that is known as Pak Strait. So answer will be B. As you can see, Northwest, Pakistan, Afghanistan, 3, 3, 2, 3 kilometer, 106 kilometer, 3488 kilometer, 1751, 699-4096.7 kilometer, 1646 kilometer. So these are our neighbors. Which of the following statements given below is or are not correct? Barkhans are crescent shaped dunes produced by the action of wind predominantly from one direction. Right? Barren Island is the only active volcano in India. Yes. 
Anaimudi is the highest peak located in the Eastern Ghat. No, it is the Western Ghat in Annamalai Hills. Chilka Lake is the largest salt water lake in India. Yes, it's right. Only one means three is not correct. As you can see, Barkhans, Sefs, which are also known as longitudinal dunes, as because Sefs means sword, then after parabolic dunes and transverse dunes, all are the depositional landform features made by wind. In the context of planets of our solar system, consider the following statements. The planet Earth is flattened at its pole, right? Gaseous planets like Jupiter, Saturn and Uranus have belts of small debris around them, yes, which are known as rings. Planet Venus is considered as the Earth's twins because its size and shape are very much similar to that of Earth. Yes, right. All of the three means B is the correct answer. Northern plains are the youngest physiographic features of India. In this regard, which of the following sentence is or are correct? The northern plains have been formed by rivers such as the Indus, Ganga and Brahmaputra along with their tributaries. Correct. Northern plains are described as flat land with no variation in its relief. No, it's wrong. There is variation because the Bhabar belt, Tarai belt, then after the plain area, then after again the meandering path. So only one is correct. Consider the following statements. Rare species are species which are only found in some particular areas, usually isolated by natural or geographical barriers. No. Actually, they are endemic species. Endemic species are with small population may move into the endangered or vulnerable category. No, it's not necessary. Vulnerable species are species whose population has declined to level from where it is likely to move into endangered category. Yes, it's right. Means only three is the answer. Match the following pairs, Mahavat, Kalbaisakhi and Lu. Local name of the storm, strongest winds and local name of the winter rainfall. So actually Mahavat is the local name of the rainfall means 1 C. Kalbaisakhi is the local name of the storm means 2 A and Lu means strong gusty hot and dry winds during summer season. So answer will be B. In context of the peninsula rivers in India consider the following statements. River like Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri flow eastward and drain into Bay of Bengal. Yes, it's right. Rivers Narmada and Tapi flow in west direction and make estuary. Yes, it's right. River Narmada originates from Amarkantak Hills located in Madhya Pradesh. Yes. Tapi River rises in the highlands of Chotanagpur Plateau. No. It rises from Satpura Range, Multai Hills. So only 1, 2 and 3 are correct. As you can see, the rivers Ganga, Indus, Luni, which is known as inland drainage, Sabarmati, Mahi, Narmada, Tapi, Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri. Answer will be 1, 2 and 3. Consider the following factors, Coriolis force, altitude, latitude, western cyclonic disturbances and pressure. Which of the fall factors given above are responsible for affecting India's climate? So all are responsible means 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 because Coriolis force is responsible for drifting the monsoon winds towards Indian subcontinent then after the altitude in the Himalayan region, latitude, torrid zone western cyclonic disturbances in the form of western disturbances which make the northeast monsoon for the south india and pressure belts creation of low pressure belt which lead to formation of it uh, shifting of itcz on indian subcontinent and attracts the monsoon winds so all are the factors which control the indian climate Amalthea, one of the satellites of planet Jupiter, was seen in news. 
recently in this context consider the following statements this satellite contributes to one of the gossamer rings of the planet jupiter yes it's right it is tidally locked to jupiter in synchronous rotation yes it's right this moon always aligns with the planet along its along its long axis yes it's right so answer will be all three means 1 2 and 3 next in the context of bharat tap initiative consider the following statements it is launched by the ministry of housing and urban affairs it is right under this initiative the technique of high flow tap and fixtures is used no it's wrong this initiative will help in conservation of water yes it's right means the answer will be three read the following statements regarding the macolin convention it is a multilateral treaty aimed at checking match fixing right it is a legal instrument and the only rule of international law on the manipulation of sports competitions yes it's right this convention focuses on preventing and punishing illegal sports betting operations yes it's also right means three is correct Abortion in India was made legal as per the provisions of the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act 1971. In this context, consider the following statements. This act recognizes the right of a pregnant person to decide on the discontinuation of pregnancy. No, it's completely wrong. Under this act, for termination of pregnancy from 20 weeks up to 24 weeks, the opinion of two registered medical practitioners is required. Yes, it's right, means option number two is correct. Recent effects of climate change visible in the form of like heat waves, droughts, etc have brought into focus two standards strands of environmental physiology that reinvent the relationship between nature and humans that is shallow and deep ecologism who among the following personality was the prominent of this philosophy Arnenes, alfred wagner Florence Nightingale Alexander Humboldt. So answer is Arnenes. With reference to the election of the President of India, consider the following statements. Election of the President shall be held in accordance with the system of proportional representation by the means of single transferable vote. No, it's wrong. The member of the legislative assemblies of the state do not participate in election process of the president. Yes, it's right. Means only two is correct. Means two. Mind it. Consider the following statement. It is the second most important cereal crop in India after rice. It is a rabi crop. It needs a rainfall of around 75 to 100 centimeter. Well drained, fertile, loamy and clay loamy soil is needed for its growth. I know the answer will be wheat. Which of the following statements is or are correct about the Martand Sun, Martand Sun Temple? It was built by Lalita Ditya Mukta Pida in the 8th century AD. Yes, it's right. It is one of the oldest sun temple that was destroyed by Sikandar Sa Miri in the 14th century AD. Yes, it's right. Means both are correct. 
in the context of the Prapati portal, recent, recently seen in news, consider the following statements. It is a web portal launched by the Ministry of Power. Yes, it was launched to bring transparency to power purchase trans transactions between generators and discoms. Yes, it's also right. Both 1 and 2 are correct. Read the following statements carefully. He wrote his first poetry and published it aged 16 under the pen name Bhan, Bhanu Simha. He became the first Indian to receive the Nobel Prize in Literature for his novel Gitanjali. I know it's the well-known answer. That is the Ravindra Nath Tagore. Which of the following statements are correct regarding the Pradhan Mantri Jeevan Jyoti Bhima Yojana? PM JJBY. Individuals in the age group of 18 to 50 years are eligible under this scheme. Yes, it's right. The scheme provides a life cover of rupees 2 lakh in case of death due to any reason. Yes, it is a government backed life insurance scheme in India. Yes, it's right. All the three sentences are correct. Recently, a declaration was made by the Supreme Court of India regarding the elections of panchayat and urban local bodies. In this context, consider the following statements. The panchayat and urban local bodies are elected with a five-year term of the office at every level. The local self-government includes both ruler and the urban government. Yes, the state election commission cannot skip their constitutional obligation to conduct the polls to local bodies after the end of their term. All the three are correct. As I told you, next, sorry. Now moving on to the next question. Recently, Delhi High Court delivered a verdict in the context of expedition, exception provided to the marital rape in Indian Penal Code with reference to this, which of the following statements is or are correct? Section 375 of the Indian Penal Code considered marital rape as a crime only when the wife is below the age of 18. No, it's wrong. Marital rape victims have to take recourse to the Protection of Women from Domestic Violence Act 2005. Yes, marital rape is a criminal offense under the IPC. No, it's wrong. Only two is correct. Next, in the Context of Foreign Contribution Regulation Act, consider the following statements. This act was implemented by the Ministry of Finance. No, it's the External Affairs Ministry. Under this act, some agencies have been put under prior reference category to restrict funding from them. Yes. FESRA regulates foreign donations and ensures that such contributions do not affect the internal security of the country. Yes, it's right. Only two and three are correct. Recently, National Technology Day was celebrated in India in the context of developments witnessed in the field of science and technology. Consider the following statements. The theme for National Technology Day 2022 was integrated approach in the science and technology for a sustainable future. Technology Development Board is a con constitutional body that works under the Department of Science and Technology and Hansa 3 was India's first indigenous aircraft. All only 1 and 3 are the correct. Option number 2 is wrong or you can say sentence number 2 is wrong.
in the context of reward project which of the following statements is or are correct it will help national and state institutions to adopt improved watershed management practices to promote higher productivity right this project has been initiated by the department of revenue and is aided by world bank it is also right international bank of for reconstruction and development ibrd is one of the financing agencies involved in this project yes this is also right which means all the three are correct with reference to the united nations conventions to combat desertification uncd which of the following statements is or are not correct conference of the parties is the governing body of this conventions yes the global land outlook is the flagship publication of the uncd both are correct read the following statements about dhap dance it is an old adivasi traditional dance of tribes of jharkhand no it's wrong it is performed during the main festival of these communities nuakai right dhap is a mainly musical instrument rounded in shape and leather is tied from one side yes it's also right only 2 and 3 is correct which of the following statements is or are correct about the wet bulb temperature it combines heat and humidity to indicate how much evaporation can be absorbed into the air yes it's correct a wet bulb temperature of 32 degree celsius is usually the maximum heat that a human body can endure it's right it is measured by using a thermometer with the bulb wrapped in a wet muslin yes it's also right all the three sentences are correct with reference to pm wani scheme which of the following statements is not correct it will facilitate the development of public wifi networks in india yes it's correct it will assist in the expansion of broadband internet improvement of revenue and employment and growth of people yes correct public data office aggregator will establish maintain and operate pm wani complaint wifi access points no it's wrong public wifi hotspot service providers under this scheme do not require any license or registration yes this is also right so only third is wrong so this is the question paper or you can say the basic level india and world geography simply the last 20 question as we know is the current affairs as usual and the rest 80 are the subjective one so the main motive is that mind it this year also we have to prepare the geography section as conceptual along with factual also means your concept should be also clear and the facts related to that concept should also be clear so we will meet in the next episode till then thank you have a nice day